Good evening, and here we are for hopefully the final part of this uh, vacuum tube voltmeter. Uh, fix and repair and make work and put on the bench uh, series. Um, what have I done so far? Well, where I left it, I was rebuilding the kit from scratch and following the manual from start to finish, except for the bits I'd already done, like rebuild the printed circuit board. Um, what I have done is I've completely rewired the insides. I've put new connections between the range switch and the selector switch, uh, rewired all of the front panel sockets, yada yada, uh, yeah, yeah, I've done it as per the manual. It's probably easier to just say that, isn't it? I've built it exactly as the manual told me to. Anyway, all of the parts have been done and I've had the thing sitting on warm up, um, pretending that I'm building the sets of test leads. And it's been quite interesting. Um, I've seen no smoke, no fire, which is always a good sign. Um, currently my power meter, which is sitting over the far side of the bench, is showing uh, 5 watts. And if I just turn it over to voltage, uh, current UK mains voltage on this bench is 238.5 volts. So uh, not doing too bad. Um, yep, just, just looking through, it's set to DC+. Plus. There's... Uh, everything as per the the test and calibration and I've now made the DC leads um, this first part turn the instrument off and make sure the mechanical zero position of the meter is correct we did that the first time we tried to make it work and calibrate it and that uh, that stayed exactly where it was, so um, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, then it says, place the instrument in normal operating position, turn the black plastic screw on the meter face to get it there till it sits zero, then turn it on again. Select to switch to DC+, plus, which we've done. Check operation of zero address, adjust control. This Control should move the meter point part way up scale. Set the pointer to zero at the left side of the scale and check for zero positioning when the selector switch is changed to DC minus. So, yep, yeah, the zero adjusts it. Can I go all the way? No, I can go part way up the scale, which is correct. So let it set down to zero and let's make sure that the meter doesn't change when I go to DC minus and it moves very slightly. Let's just twash that down a bit. There we go. No deflection between DC plus and DC minus. This is a good sign. Okay, if there's merely an indication, blah, 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 you could age the 12AU7. But I think, you know, 50 years is aged enough, I think. So I'm gonna mark that as okay. DC calibrate. Insert the common and DC test leads. Right, so let's unroll these ones we built earlier. Okay, so insert common. If you're wondering what the back end is sitting on, it's actually a couple of rolls of uh, reflective um, tape. Now you notice I'm still being quite ginger when I um, touch this because uh, I don't want to I don't want to shock myself not at this time of the morning 156 a.m. on Monday the 27th yeah um, yeah I want to live to see me 52nd birthday 52nd 53rd I can't remember how old I am now um, yeah so anyway right so insert the leads DC plus make sure it's on one and a half volts yes Connect the test leads to a calibrated flashlight cell and adjust the DC calibrate control so the meter falls over the very small red dot right over there. In fact, what I'm going to do is if it has to be calibrated, let me use this power supply 
Um, bring the voltage down. How low can I bring it? That says 158. Let me just check it with the fluke, um, which is possibly not the most calibrated meter I've got, but um, it does its job. 1.455. So let's just drop it up, 1 1.58. 1.5 volt, 1.55, yeah, it's nearest, damn it, that'll do. Aim this into the, the pot. Stand the meter up and turn the calibrate control. And hopefully, my arm's not in the way. Till we're just there. Yep, I can live with that. 1.5 volts there. Okay. Install the battery, start the top end, pass into the battery cup, then pull the spring over the bottom end of the battery. I'm going to uh, drop the AC connection while I do this, um, just because I don't want to get zapped. Turn the meter back on to ohms. We'll just wait for it to warm up again. It may well have to uh, do its thing. So ohms adjust for full scale. Plug in the probe. Touch the common tip and it goes right over the bottom. Now these are old stock glass and tin oxide resistors and this particular one should read 36 ohms okay so we've got an issue with the ohm scale banging down to the bottom AC calibrate temporarily remove the AC ohms lead set it to Set the range switch to 1.5 volts, which we haven't changed. So let's switch to AC. Right, then do the AC balance control. Okay, so AC balance control is that one. So let's stand this up and twist it round. Right, there we go. We're starting to get somewhere. Just going to move my arm. And it shouldn't move when going between 8C and DC. It's having a good go, isn't it? That's interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> well, what do you know?
problem's not electrical, it's mechanical. Well, what do you know? Somewhere, one of those switches, when you bend the shaft, is making a contact. If I isolate it and just bend that one, is it the, is it the AC? Okay, where are we? I've had the switch to pieces. Um, it's now, yeah, it's now o'clock in the morning, very o'clock in the morning. Um, it's going to be daylight not long now and um, turns out this switch is mechanically knackered um, I've given the pins a little bit of a, a tweak but realistically what I'm looking for now is a replacement V7AU or V7A or any Heath kit um, select switch assembly so that's where i am with it and i think now that it's not an electrical problem um, now that it's it's purely a mechanical problem i can actually say the electronic side of things is fixed and i think i'm going to call this series a day i might come back to it if i find a reasonably priced replacement selector but at the moment, I can sit here and I can tap it, tweak it, and um, get it to make contact, and it works fine. So I'm not actually going to worry too much about the AC side of it just yet. It's calibrated, it's running, it's mechanical, and that's probably why it was so cheap. With that, I'm going to wish you all the best. And I'll see you for the next video where we can get down and dirty with some other components and maybe something a little bit more modern. Maybe another old radio. Um, I've got quite a few bits to do. Um, I've got a couple of things to show and tell, which may well become the subject of a video. But for now, I'm going to wish you goodbye. Thanks very much for putting up with this series for so long. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and the little bell icon. That way you'll get notifications of every single video I do. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.